This video was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Consider subscribing and supporting through Patreon.com slash GeneralPack. This is the mechanism for you to support us financially so we can continue making high quality power system video tutorials. Our corporate sponsor for this topic is Illumiax.com from Seattle, Washington. Contact them for industrial and commercial power system studies. Fault Analysis in Power Systems Part 2C Constructing Sequence Networks for Fault Analysis Now this is the fourth video in this series of Fault Analysis in Power Systems and in this video we will learn how to draw the sequence networks for each of the positive, negative, and zero sequence networks from the systems that was converted in Part 2B. So the network diagram that was drawn previously is a loose representation of a positive sequence network uh, which already has the delta y transformer sequence model that's integrated in it. We haven't represented the zero sequence or the negative sequence uh, network diagrams yet which is going to be the basis of this video. So because the delta y transformer connection is the most complex part in the sequence network uh, analysis we're gonna spend most of our most of our time talking about that in this tutorial so if the transformer is a delta y transformer with a neutral of the y side or the low voltage side being connected solidly grounded then the transformers positive and negative sequence networks can just be represented by a single impedance as shown below however uh, although this is very simple the zero sequence network difference. So now let's talk about the zero sequence network side of the transformer model for the delta y transformer. Now the delta side is treated as an open circuit. Now why is the delta side or the high voltage side treated as an open? The intuitive explanation will require another topic altogether but the basic example is that the delta winding traps the zero sequence current and does not allow it to flow, meaning the zero sequence current, on either direction of the transformer. Meaning, if there is a high voltage fault, the zero sequence current cannot be reflected on the low voltage side, or if there is a low voltage fault, then the zero sequence current cannot be reflected on the high voltage side. Now, refer to the figure below, which shows a low voltage fault being reflected on the high voltage side. Now, these are only zero sequence currents. As you can see, there's a fault somewhere out on, voltage, somewhere out on the line, and there is zero sequence current that are flowing through that fault, but we don't see any zero sequence current on the high voltage side, which is the delta side of the transformer. Now the second point here is that the Y side of the transformer can be represented by a series impedance ZT connected to ground at one end only because the neutral terminal of the low voltage side of the transformer, this is the Y side, is connected to ground. So the ground connection will cause the zero sequence current to flow into ground and allow the fault to circulate but remain on the low voltage side only because the zero sequence current will not be reflected on the high voltage side as we discussed earlier because of the delta connection which is modeled as an open circuit for the zero sequence network. This is only true for the zero sequence current, right? Because the transformer will have a positive and it will have a negative sequence current reflected on the high voltage side, but it won't have a zero sequence current. Now this concept again requires a topic in and of itself, so we will keep this brief and continue with our example. Now another thing to keep in mind that different transformer connections will require different zero sequence network diagrams although the positive and negative sequence network, the zero sequence network is going to be different based off the transformer connection. Now this is true for both two winding transformers as well as three winding transformers. So now let's draw the positive sequence network, right? In the positive sequence network, which is drawn, we haven't covered this in part 2b, but the generator's voltage source per unit values will be one per unit at the angle of zero degrees. Now this is fairly simple because we conveniently selected 115 kV as the base voltage 
which was the same voltage as our generator source. The voltage source is also sometimes called prefault voltage. Selecting one per unit as zero degrees is a very common value for fault analysis. Now the short circuit impedance of the generator, J.05 per unit, is added in series next. A line is drawn to mark the 115 kV bus and kV bus, and then the positive sequence representation of the delta Y transformer is drawn with a series impedance of J.10 per unit. A line then is also drawn for the 13.8 kV bus. Now remember, the voltage, this line is only full of voltage references and is meant to be a guide. It is not meant to reflect actual voltages on the circuit. So that was the positive sequence network. Now let's draw the negative sequence network. For the negative sequence network, it's essentially the same as the positive sequence network with the exception that there is no voltage source. Uh, this is because the generator does not produce negative sequence currents and therefore does not inject negative sequence current in the system during a faulted condition. But negative sequence current will still flow through the winding for a balance and unbalance fault. So we still represent 5 per unit, but we don't represent the actual voltage source of 1 per unit at 0 degrees. So it's very similar to the positive sequence network diagram. Now we move towards the zero sequence network diagram. Now the zero sequence network diagram, just like the negative sequence network diagram, there is no voltage source. There is the same generator impedance of J.05 per unit, then there's a line to indicate the 115 kV bus, and then we reach the transformer. We pick up the zero sequence model for the delta Y transformer that was discussed earlier in the video and insert it into the network with the impedance of 0 0.10 per unit. And then there's a line to indicate the 13.8 kV bus and the network is then complete. Now notice that for the network diagram for the transformer, there's an open for the high voltage side of the transformer, which represents the delta. And on the low voltage side, there's a short immediately before the 0 0.10 per unit uh, impedance. That short represents the low voltage Y side of the transformer connected to ground. Now, in the next video, we will show how we can connect these three individual sequence networks in the event of a fault and use them to calculate the fault currents and voltages uh, quite easily. So please join us for part three in the next video.